Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much if you already subscribed. If not, make sure you do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be the first to know when a new video is out, especially when it comes to parenting. Now today, woo, guys, let me not get emotional in this video. So when I was pregnant, I had ideas in my mind as to what is child care for baby gonna look like. So of course you're like, cool, there'll be a nanny, there'll be the family support and extended family, but the idea of Christian nursery school will only happen when he's like two, three years old, he'll get all the support that he needs. Then baby's born and yes, you're like, oh no, this little one must stay home and be loved up and all of these things. And that narrative and that idea continued until Koki was about 11 months old. And then what happened? He turned one. And suddenly, this kid, and he started walking um, before he turned one. But then he got confident in his walking. He is all over the place. He is so busy. He is so smart. He is repeating the things that we say. He's understanding certain instructions in English, in Swana. Um, he is now bright and then all the ideas that were in in the mind about you know what his childcare looks like had to change and i'll have to share with you why is that you know his nanny who is so fantastic um he has his little routine in his room they have specific educational toys they read together he actually we have like sort of double support just in terms of nannies um, so that obviously the house is getting cleaned and we have the main nanny, but there is support when it's needed. So just in terms of um, that, the one helper slash nanny, you know, she loves saying in the morning, you know, it's time for religious studies. <laughs> She does religious studies and he has his baby Bible. She does, you know, physical therapy and exercises. And before, you know, obviously when he was really small, you do the little like gym legs and all of those things. Now that he's a bit bigger, um, you know, there's still this idea of like, these are the things we want him to learn from colors to music to being creative, to naming things, to get his baby Bible, books that are read to him. Fast forward now to him being one year old, being a busybody, and all of these things that he's been getting as support just did not seem sufficient enough. So what happened one day, I'm seeing my son in the house and you know, he's exploring. He has many toys, he has a play den, in the lounge area we've got a really big garden where he can go outside but here he was just digging through cupboards and you know those of us that grew up in black homes they'd be like oh stop do wow the money cover thing oh the child is naughty because he's exploring but that's that's what kids do they start to explore especially the things that you try to keep them away from like our phones like the remotes for the tv like the cupboards in the kitchen and i kind of looked at the situation and how my child needed a certain amount of energy especially in certain places in the house we were completely unable to soundproof and i thought to myself i think my son is ready for crush oh, man i can't believe it can't believe it but i looked at him i thought originally in my mind he was going to start crush when he's two or three and can talk and tell me if people are doing things to him but then I was like, my son needs stimulation. Is he getting adequate stimulation at home? There's so many things that we've enrolled him in, which are fantastic. He has swimming lessons. He has a stimulation uh, class where he gets specific er exercises that he does. Um, in, in that class, he, he, he is quite an active baby and we go out of our way to make sure that he's adequately st stimulated. But I thought to myself, maybe this little guy is ready for crash quite soon. Let's go explore. Go and check out a crash. And when I saw the schedule, I was sold because they have creativity stimulation, fine motor skill stimulation. Um, they have all types of stimulation. They prepare the food. They go there early. They get to socialize. 
and I was like, I think Mugugehi is ready for crash and it is a massive adjustment. One of the challenges that he has had is, um, you know, because of COVID, we don't just willy-nilly randomly go to malls and things like that. I mean, I have my own issues with being out uh, when I don't need to be going out. So because of that, he hasn't been exposed to many people. He's been exposed to family. And if he hasn't seen a relative in a long time, he'll be like, mm. so I was like, okay, maybe we need to do a bit more to help him um, socialize. So he's been registered huh, for three days a week, three half days. You can drop him anytime between 6.30 a.m. and 8 a.m. And he finishes uh, school at two. He has a very small class and I went to, you know, go check it out. Um, they've got cots there. They've got a routine. I met the teachers. Um, but the thing that really sold me is the part that he needs adequate stimulation. I think, you know, he will just absolutely flourish interacting with other babies and little ones in his stimulation class. I mean, he'd only get to do that for an hour and a half a day. They have little not jungle gyms but little like activity areas where they can do things physically um they are teachers there that are experts especially with early childhood development that are doing things that we simply cannot provide for him at home i being a working mom um want to be sure that my son is getting the development that he needs but i also understand that it might not work out um one of the other big fears is that he's starting crash in winter and it's cold but also the fear that you know kids get bugs they call it crash syndrome it's not a medical term it's just a term that is used um uh to it, it, to basically demonstrate how little kids get lots they pick up respiratory sort of infections regularly some of them are viral infections some of them are not and um we have basically started to prepare him so he will be starting crash in a couple of days and what that means is um we started him on a multivitamin we also have started him on an immune booster supplement we did speak to the pharmacist and we spoke to the doctor to get advice as to what to use and how to prepare him i'm busy exploring um also some homeopathic supplements just to make sure that his airways are fine and his sinuses are fine he's breathing okay um now that he's going to be playing outside in winter we actually had to beef up his wardrobe and it was time to buy him new clothes anyways because he's now in the 12 to 18 month age group so lots of slippers and shoes and boots and track suits um i've actually ordered some inside kind of like leggings um more socks and just things to get him ready for crash and i am nervous as hell because um even on on Pat, you know i interviewed a guest whose child was abused at crash and um is still dealing with the consequences of that today so human beings are human beings and we just have to sort of put trust in the school um I do think as a parent, I'm going to be those overly involved parents. I've been on the phone with the principal, just triple checking what are some of the things that they need to do to prepare for crash and get ready and how we deal with the menu. But the biggest part is how we deal with the routine change. So they are going to accommodate Mokokehi in terms of the fact that he's on a two nap cycle and his age group, which is zero to two, I think in his class, they're around one year up and um they're on a one nap cycle but what will happen which there's another kid in his class that's also on a two nap cycle they put them down and when they're up they have a full full program for the day um i will do a separate video just to talk about how we prep him for crash not just like labeling clothes and things like that but actually like in the morning because it's going to be brand new to all of us I am dreading the first day when I have to drop him off because of COVID protocols. The parent can't actually go into class with him and get him settled and leave. You have to drop him off with a container, not a bag, because it's easier to sanitize items in a container. And then they go off. I am petrified. 
not just for baby's safety, but just for his like emotional well-being. I'm nervous that he's gonna feel like his parents dumped him somewhere. I am scared that he might not like it. I'm scared that he's gonna get sick a lot. I'm scared that him getting sick is also gonna affect everybody else in the house. Um, but with all of those fears, I'm so excited that he's gonna socialize. He's, he's probably going to start speaking a lot more. He's going to be exposed to other adults and other kids. He's going to build a strong immune system. I'm excited for him to just get to explore and get to see people that are not just his family. So I'll have a follow-up video um, just sharing how it all went down. But share with me what was it like deciding it's time for baby to go to crash. I'm fortunate that I have the choice because some parents, you literally have no one that's able to stay with baby, maybe family's far or family's working. I'm fortunate that we have a full-time live-in nanny who can be with him, but I'm still making the choice that for three half days a week, he's going to go to crash, get a different type of stimulation and we see how it goes. Tell me about your experiences. How did you decide? Did you also sort of discover that Oh, when you first had the baby, you thought, oh, I'm going to do things like this. And then real life happens. You're like, okay, that's not going to work anymore. Let's try something else. Let me know your questions. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. And also the bell so that you can be the first to get notified. All of your parenting questions, put them down below. Thank you so much for watching this video.